Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin, Friday, February 27th, 2015. Once again, out walking the big guy. Not quite risking my neck as much. The ice is beginning to melt. And uh, yesterday I brought you the uh, secret untold history of Commodore computers, focusing on one of the great unsung heroes of the computer industry. Uh, the still living Chuck Peddle, who invented the um, $25 version of what previously had been uh, around $300, thereby creating the home computer industry that went into the VIC-20, the Commodore 64, the Apple II, and almost everything that came after to such a degree that the uh, rest of the computer industry uh, led by Acorn, backed by VLSI and Apple, banded together and created the ARM processor. So you can attribute the uh, very smartphone in your pocket and the one I'm shooting this video on as a direct competitive response to the Commodore 64. And uh, uh, fast forward in time to today. And uh, where is Acorn? Well, they're actually still around, but I'll save that as the uh, punchline for the end of the video. This is the untold history of Commodore. So, um, let me actually go back in time real quickly to talk about another great unsung and unfortunately no longer with us history uh, or hero of the uh, home computer industry. Uh, really, the video game industry. His name was uh, Jerry Lawson a African-American from Brooklyn who happened to lead up the Skunk Works division of Fairchild Semiconductors. It was a camera company, uh, like so many other companies of the day, saw that money was in uh, computers when transistors came onto the scene, uh, switched to that, and that's a company that a bunch of the uh, Intel founders actually came from. So. Uh, Fairchild is kind of the granddaddy of, of a lot of stuff. Uh, Intel was almost like a spin-off of Fairchild. But anyway, uh, they decided to get into the uh, home uh, game console industry like before anyone else. And uh, Jerry Lawson uh, created the Fairfield Channel or Fairchild Channel F uh, game console. And uh, never went anywhere. Uh, the one that actually ended up taking off so big was the Atari 2600, uh, which we probably, people from my generation, all know and maybe even still have. And that was created uh, for Atari by a hardware engineer named Jay Miner. Again, another unsung hero, no longer with us. Uh, but Later on, he decided to start his own company. So, uh, Jay Miner banded up with a bunch of other like-minded people, RJ Michael, Dale Luck, uh, and created Amiga. And got some funding from some doctors and promptly ran out of money, but created something super awesome special, uh, particularly with their graphics coprocessor units, which in the day was really unusual to build something to just handle graphics outside the main processor itself. That meant that games could run so much more smooth because when things happened on the screen, it didn't slow everything in the system else uh, down. So very innovative. We know it today as the GPU or the graphics coprocessor unit, which is increasingly built directly into the main processor itself for better integration, better cost effectiveness, etc. cetera. Uh, but the Amiga's version was called the Blitter Chip, way ahead of its time, creation of, of J minor, and uh, uh, in the direct lineage, you would say, of all the rest of the Atari computers. So all you Amiga freaks out there uh, who curse Commodore for going under, uh, take some consolation in the fact that uh, the computer you love is more in the direct lineage of the Atari 2600, 4800, and then the Atari 400 and 800 home computers than it is that anything Commodore built uh, to that point. But when Amiga ran out of money, the uh, infamous and amazing Jack Tremiel decided, hey, he'd like the Amiga computer. So he bid for it, 
and as the Amiga people tried to jack up the price, Jack kept lowballing them until Amiga was beaten into submission and bought so that they could get anything. And then one of the big, amazing, ironic turnarounds of the industry happened. Jack Tramiel got driven out of, Com out of Commodore by Irving Gould and took over Atari, where Jack led up the creation of the Atari 520 ST, an alleged Amiga killer, to compete with a thing he had just bought that Commodore now owned, and they went to war with each other. But uh, neither ended up being the super successful thing because the PC clones took over the world. Uh, but that, I guess, is the, uh, the, the, the secret untold Commodore history part here, uh, where the Amiga came from and how it's, it's uh, a creation of the uh, Atari engineers. But I thought I'd wind up this video by pointing out that that strange wild card maverick company, Acorn Computers, the uh, Commodore of the UK, is still around today. And as you may know, I find a lot of the spirit of the Amiga in this $35 fully functional computer that is changing the world called the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi, although it was created by a foundation in the UK, led by Eben Upton and with a corporate sponsorship Broadcom, little does anyone know that the main distributor, the people who bring this thing to the world, who ship it all over the place, is none other than today's incarnation of Acorn Computers called Element 14 who shipped me the very Raspberry Pi you saw me do the unboxing video of the other day with a 900 megahertz quad core which will run anything you're used to running today with the exception of course of things like Battlefield all right and uh, continues to change the world and makers of the world rejoice so anyway uh, thanks for joining me uh, hope to talk to you soon and if you're interested in these untold histories of the computer and video game industries let me know because i can keep them coming i was close to this tiny little piece of the action over here on the east coast where you know inexplicably some of it played out with moss and commodore most of it was before my time and nowhere near me but i do have stories i do have friends and i can keep them flowing so thanks for joining me don't forget to subscribe and refer someone in thanks bye